on that perspective. Because we must be reminded of the provisions of our constitution, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. Mr. President, Chapter 4 of our constitution is very explicit on the issue of fundamental rights. Chapter 4 of our constitution is very explicit on the issue of fundamental rights. Mr. President, if you have a closer look at our constitution, we have about eight rights that are clearly stated. The first one is right to life, right to dignity of human person, the right to fair hearing, the right to private family life, right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion, right to freedom of expression and the press, right to peaceful assembly and association, right to freedom of movement, right to acquire and own immovable property anywhere in Nigeria. These eight rights, Mr. President, we are talking of the right to life. We know it too that it is the right of every Nigerian to have his right preserved, his life preserved. And if you look at that, the first right in our constitution, of course, in that chapter, and the only reason why somebody's life must be taken must be as a result of our education by a court of competent jurisdiction. Anything different from that is a violation of the provision of this constitution. Mr. President, awful times in this country, even agencies of government that are established, we have seen it that people have violated the rights of, of Nigerians. When, of course, you violate the right to life, when a court, a court of competent jurisdiction has not so adjudicated, it is that you call it extrajudicial killing, which, of course, is a violation. We have a judicial system. We have our justice system. We have our codes, both penal and criminal codes. And we expect that those who violate these codes must be brought to book. Mr. President, oftentimes, if you remember in the 8th Senate, we too try to do amendment to the FCC Act. And the area of it that was more meaningful was the violation of fundamental rights, where people are arrested and incarcerated, when, of course, issues have not been fully investigated, when, of course, properties are forfeited, when, of course, a court of competent jurisdiction has not adjudicated on the matter. All these things are occurrences happening in our country today, and I believe they are very serious issues. All throughout last week, my phone was inundated with calls. This issue of federal, you know, SARS. Every time now you see them, they are, I call them urban, urban terrorists. You see them, they are, they are done in, you know, attires that you can best describe, you know, for criminals. So it is not just happening. And I thank uh, Senator Lurebi, who has brought this to the fore. So I thought of it that once we resume this week, we're going to bring up this matter. It's not an issue of national disgrace. And a body like this, a distinguished Senate, this chamber, we must say to them very clearly that they are violating the laws. And when they are serious reprisers that are meted out on these violators, I think it will serve as a deterrent. Mr. President, only last week, Senator Tazi came in here and mentioned how a young girl who had just finished her youth service was killed in Abuja. And we have been seeing pockets of all these type of ugly occurrences across the country. We we'll come in here, we we'll talk about it. Nobody avails us of the serious consequences that will be meted out to these people. But I think for, the, for once, this motion must attract very serious resolution that anybody that commits the crime, that, that of course takes the life of another Nigerian, we know what the law says. You two should lose your life. If we are able to take the law to a logical conclusion, then of course we have started on the journey of ensuring that our society get better. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Minority Leader. Minority, minority Whip, sorry.